Hey, what's up guys, GK here. So by the end of this video, you're going to learn how to deploy this small website that you're looking here into a GKE cluster. So you will understand how to create a container, how to run a web server inside a container, deploy your sample website HTML code, and then build that image, push that image to GCR, and finally deploy that image to GKE cluster. So this is part two of GKE with GK. Please do click on subscribe to not to miss all my GK videos. So I have divided this entire video into two sections. So one is first creating the container. So we're not going in depth into the container tutorial because this video is to focus more on deploying the container into GK cluster. So this video is more on creating our first GK cluster. But still for the people who do not know what is a container, so you'll also know how to create a small container with the Nginx web server running inside it. So what is a container? So basically think of container at a very high level as a micro VM. So that runs on top of your Linux server. So it contains all the dependencies of, of your application, application code, client libraries. These small containers use constructs like C groups and namespaces, which are part of Linux kernel to create that isolation on top of your Linux server. So by deploying multiple containers on top of your Linux server, you can use Docker. So basically you are using Docker to containerize your code, you know, build the code, build the image, and then ship the code finally a Kubernetes cluster. So now let's start with the first section. So we're going to create a sample website that you looked at my screen, which is a Cloud Advocate website. You can rename yourself, whatever you want to call it. But basically, you know, we're going to deploy this um, and, and then we're going to move this container or rather ship this container to GK cluster. As always, log into your Google console and click on the cloud shell. So once you click on the cloud shell, click on this icon on the right hand side to open this cloud shell in a new tab uh, because we will do a lot of commands and you know, we'll try to keep the two things completely separated. So as soon as you open the console, make sure that you set your config project. So Cloud Shell has a persistent volume. So it stores your files and it's a VM that is dedicated for your cloud account. So you want to set your project to make sure that you are accessing the right project and you're deploying your GKE cluster in the right project. So since I'm using YouTube demo here, you know, the command to set the project is gcloud config set project and the project ID. Okay, so once you set the project ID, you would see the project ID appearing here, which means that now we are uh, going to work on this project. So the advantage of using um, Cloud Shell is it has a Docker already installed in it. So now let's say that I want to simply run an Nginx server, right? So I have all the commands here and I'm going to paste these commands or you know i'm going to give access to you the whole file in my uh, description so don't worry about that but to start with you know the command is very simple docker run and minus p is we are exposing our port which is going to be the local port of this cloud shell which is uh, 8080 and so the port that we're going to expose from the container is 80. As you all know, Nginx web server runs on port 80. And then we're going to pass the image name Nginx with the latest version. Now, when you run this command, so what's going to happen is, so Docker is going to pull the latest image. The image already has Nginx on top of it. So it's going to get that image with Nginx. And once it downloads that, it runs that container. So container is a runnable image, right? So it's an actually running micro VM. Now, if you want to view this um, container, you can click on the web preview on the cloud shell and click on preview on port 8080. So if you want to change the port, you can change the port. So let's say you want to change the port uh, to which you want to expose, then you can change here from 8080 to 9000. But since we, have, we are using 8080 here, I'm going to click on 8080. Okay. So as you see here, it says, welcome to Nginx. This is the default HTML page. So I'm gonna do control C. Because you ran the command here, the container was running. So as soon as you 
hit on control C this page is gone because the container got killed so if you want to access your containers that were running previously you can do PS minus A which will show you all the previous containers if you want to look at the current containers that are running you can do docker PS that shows you the list of containers that are running but because we killed it by doing control C we don't have any containers at this point of time so clear this off so now we're going to run the container in a background right so the command for that is docker again the same command that we typed before now we're going to add minus d here which is a daemon so this will run the container in the background so when you do docker ps now you can see the container id the image id in the command that we gave and uh, the ports that were exposed if i refresh this page you would see uh, the container is running now what i want to do is i want to copy my index.html so what i did was i have created a sample index.html um, this is what i was showing you before it has my uh, website a sample website so i want to copy this and then create an image out of it right so there are multiple ways of doing it you know the suggestible way or the recommended way of doing this is by creating a docker file uh, so that you can copy all these commands and then run it together but I want to run more commands to you all so that you get more hands on with Docker. So I'm going to use Docker PS to get the container ID. And I'm going to copy this Linux, uh, I'm going to copy this rather index.html file. So Docker CP index.html. And inside this container, container ID colon user share nginx html so this is the path of nginx html in linux so you know uh, like you know when you install httpd you will have var www.html for nginx it is user share nginx html now i copied that index.html and then if i refresh this page now you can see my website is up and running inside container it's all good so now what I have to do is, so this container is, uh, like I've said, it's a runnable component, right? So right now the latest index.html is inside this, but this image still has the old code, right? So we want to build the new image with the latest changes. So for that, the command is docker commit container ID. And this is your image that you're going to create. So docker ps docker commit okay so now we have committed this container and then we've created a new image so now when we look at all the images that are existing on this server if you do docker images you will see the repository and the tag which is scad web and the tag is version one and this is the image id this is perfect so we have committed the latest changes of the container into a local repository so the next thing that we want to do is we want to follow the steps that were documented well documented in google cloud website where we're going to push our image from the local uh, where it is running in my cloud shell evm into the google container registry so google container registry is a repository of all the containers right so that you want to maintain basically you know think of it as a github repo uh, for your docker images so it maintains your docker images and the version name you know and and different host names because there are multiple hosts where you can push your docker images so for now i'm i'm going to choose usgcr.io so before we push the image we have to tag it so docker tag and this is the image that we currently have this is the host name and followed by the project id and the repository name that we're going to push along with the you know version copy that and go to the cloud shell and run this so now if you do docker images you're going to see a new image a new repository here 
now we are going to push that. So the command again is docker push uh, to this host name and project ID and the repository along with the image. All right. So now when I go back to the container registry and do a refresh here, you can see that it has cat site and the image name is also present here. If you click on the image, you can see the image time, you know, size of the virtual image size and the versions, tags, etc, etc. So you can actually deploy this image from here itself. You can deploy to Cloud Run. As you all know, you know, Cloud Run is a serverless for containers. You can deploy to GC where you can run the container inside your compute engine. But for this tutorial, we're going to deploy in GKE, but I'm not going to do from the UI. Feel free to do that from UI if you want to do that and try to deploy from here, but I would rather do it from the command line to make it more complex. So we have done the first part. So this tutorial is done. So basically we have created a container. Uh, we have built the container into an image. We have tagged it and we have pushed it to the GCR. The second and most important thing where the fun starts is now we're going to create our first GKE cluster. First things first, if you haven't set the project ID um, to your config G cloud, set it and then set this as well, where you're going to deploy your VMs, right? So if you remember my last video of uh, GKE components, right? So your actual worker nodes or, or your application, your pods or all those components run inside a Google compute engine. I'm going to tell Google to run everything in US Central one year. All right, so I have said that. Now we're going to create the cluster. The command is G cloud container. Container is the service clusters uh, and it's always plural create this is the cluster name and I'm going to just create one node. If you don't know what is a node, I highly recommend going back to my previous video and understand what is node. So it is going to create the GK cluster in US Central 1A cluster has been configured. So now we can go to Kubernetes engine. And we can see that the cluster is currently getting created. One of the advantages of having GKE instead of creating your own clusters in Compute Engine is it has awesome features like you know node repairs. For example, if your node is down or if it is in an unhealthy state, it can auto repair. So you you have nothing to do in the terms of managing the cluster or managing the nodes. So I'm going to pause this video while it's getting created. All right. So now the cluster is created. You can see the location of this cluster and the version of uh, Google Kubernetes engine and the master IP machine type that it is using to you know, configure the nodes, and the node version, number of nodes and the status. So we are good here. Now, if you go back to the console, you can do refresh and you can see the cluster is currently running and it, the status is green. All right, so the next thing what we have to do is we have to deploy our container, right? So they have to first get the credentials. So what this command does is it's going to configure your kubectl to use the cluster. So what is kubectl? Kubectl is a kube controller where you're going to use this command line, you know, CLI utility to talk to the Kubernetes engine and, you know, do all the operations like deploying the container, getting uh, the status of the containers, pods, nodes, and everything. So kubectl is going to talk to a API server and from API server, it is going to do all the operations. Let's go back to the cloud shell and enter this. All right, so kube config generated. We are good with authentication. Now we can talk to our cluster from uh, cloud shell. So we want to deploy the application to the cluster. So for that, the command is kubectl create deployment. And this is the name of the application. The image is the image of uh, the latest that we have deployed deployed here. So this is the image that we are picking up from there. So let's copy this command and paste it here. 
as you can see the it, it got created successfully now let's go to the next one so after you deploy the application you want to expose to the internet right because you know you have deployed the container uh, and it, it might be running somewhere but ultimately unless you expose that with some endpoint or with some uh, IP address you know external people cannot access it so to expose your application we're going to run this command and the deployment name here is web server so we're going to expose it as uh, type load balancer when we expose it as a load balancer it is going to create a compute engine load balancer for your container and then the port initializes the public port 80 to the internet and then target port routes the target to your 8080 application the target port is also 80 here right so because our nginx is running in 80 we're going to copy this and paste it here so now we're going to see the status of the ports we're going to do get ports one pod is running and zero restarts so now we need the service name so after we have exposed we have to get the service so get service not gk cluster web server this is going to be the external ip here so copy this external ip and paste it open this this is the public ip and you can see that you know the html page that we have created inside a container so we are able to successfully deploy that into our google kubernetes engine cluster so this is a quick start for our gk tutorial i'm going to post more such tutorials in my uh, gk series but i hope this was helpful for you all so feel free to ask more questions in the comment section and if you like this do click on the like button and let me know if you're able to deploy your first container in gk cluster with that thank you all for watching this video and i'm going to come up with more videos next time until then take care bye